Second point is that you said that there's no prebiotic soup. And so therefore, why aren't the textbooks changed? Because that takes away life arising from evolutionary means. Well, this is a relatively recent discovery that Earth never had a primordial soup. And as I mentioned in the clip, one reason we know that is because of the isotope signatures. Uh, our bodies have more carbon-12 relative to carbon-13, and there are other elements where we have discordant. And what we notice is we never see the evidence for the non-organic building blocks for life. And we also know why. Uh, if there were uh, oxygen in the early Earth's environment, that would prevent any prebiotic chemistry. But if there is no oxygen in the Earth's environment, there will be no ozone and nothing to stop ultraviolet radiation coming in from the sun. Ultraviolet radiation would be just as catastrophic to prebiotic chemistry. So by two independent means, we know Earth never had a primordial soup. And if the origin of life happened without a soup and without any significant time, that means there's no naturalistic explanation possible for the origin of life. It must be a supernatural event. So God created man, but the scientists that don't want to accept that have to look for another place for life to come from. So they've actually started to look to the heavens, to other planets. And that's why we see it so much in the news. Isn't that correct? That's right. If you don't believe in God and you can't make it work without God on the earth, then they're going to say it must have happened somewhere else in outer space and got transported to the earth. All right, we've got a clip that's going to talk about this. I want you to watch. Given so little time and the absence of a prebiotic soup, some scientists now look to the heavens for answers to the origin of life problem. They look up, not for a supernatural cause, but to search for other sources which could have deposited the seeds of life on the early Earth. Could life have arisen on one of our planetary neighbors and then have been transported to Earth? Many scientists are now looking to other planets to find support for this idea. But even if we were to find life on a nearby planet, where did that life come from? How can we be sure of any life we find on a nearby planet is not really a cross-contamination from the abundance of life on Earth? The Earth is brimming over with life. It's only a matter of time before we find the remains of these Earth organisms on Mars. And many scientists will claim this is undeniable proof that life erodes by natural processes there. But a simple test exists which would prove these organisms came from Earth. All DNA has a consistent complex signature or order to its structure. This signature is passed down from each living organism before it. If the DNA signatures found in the remains of life on Mars match that of the DNA found in life forms on Earth, then the only logical conclusion is that the stuff on Mars must have somehow come from Earth. Just as asteroids and comets colliding with Mars can send Martian rocks to Earth, so too collision events on Earth send Earth rocks to Mars and the rest of the solar system. While Mars is the best candidate beyond Earth for finding the remains of Earth life, it offers a far from hospitable environment. Mars is so dry, its atmosphere so thin, and its gravity so weak that a drop of water evaporates in less than one second on the Martian surface. Radiation, violent storms, instabilities of axis and orbit, and freezing temperatures lower than the Antarctic winter mean life cannot survive there, at least not for long. Billions of years ago, Mars had a warmer and wetter climate, which led scientists to speculate it could have spawned life. However, the chemical environment of early Mars 
was even harsher than Earth's, making a naturalistic scenario for the origin of life impossible. <laughs>